Yuuki is an ugly, repulsive loser high school student who has nothing going on in his life. His sister has taught him how to do chores since he was a child, and she will even punish him if he doesn't do it correctly because in his world, every guy is useless. However, his sister vanished a few years ago following what they refer to as a motto event. Some odd portals going to another dimension known as motto arose years ago, and monsters known as Shuki emerged. However, they discovered some peaches inside that dimension that may grant every woman superpowers and help her fend against the demons. He starts to freak out and pulls out the motto instruction manual. When a citizen finds themselves in motto, they should wait for the demon defense force to rescue them. Yuuki intends to do this, but a Shuki comes and attacks him. Yuuki flees for his life, but reaches at a dead end, and numerous more Shuki appear. The demon is going to destroy him when a girl riding a Shuki saves him. She deems him unlucky and starts a battle with the other monsters. She slashes a number of the demons with her sword, but the Shuki she is riding has had its arms severed. Her name is Kaiyuka, and she commands the Demon Defense Force's 7th Squadron. She orders Yuuki to keep back, takes possession of one of the Shuki with a chain around its neck, and the two escape. They are pursued, but Himari, Ni, and Shushu arrive to support their commander. Ni examines their surroundings and discovers that a horde of monsters is approaching soon, so Kaiyuka instructs them to handle it while she takes the boy to safety. The sisters quickly handle business, with Himari transforming her hand into a rifle to shoot the demons and Shushu growing into a gigantic. Yuuki had only heard whispers about the demon defense force, so seeing them in action today fascinates him. The females finish up and discover an unconscious boy. They presume that their commander has already returned to the hostel, so they decide to go see if the last site has been cleared before coming home. However, the little kid awakens and begins looking around for his sister. Elsewhere, we see that Kaiyuka has not returned yet, and they come across the little boy's sister. She's going to tumble off a cliff, but Kaiyuka saves her. However, Kaiyuka's Shuki slave is far too sluggish, so they must abandon it, and she begins fighting the demons. One of the demons targets the small girl, and Yuuki heroically guards her, but Kaiyuka saves him again. She rapidly forms a barrier, but the demons start to break through. Kaiyuka begins to wonder how she ended up with such a weak power. People have been talking about her since she was small. She is famed for her strength, but her abilities are subpar, and they are certain she will never be the supreme commander. Kaiyuka, on the other hand, is determined to prove everyone incorrect and declares his intention to one day rule over all commanders. Time is running out, and she considers testing her abilities on a man. She informs Yuuki that she wants something from him so that they can leave, and he agrees to do whatever it takes to survive. Kaiyuka informs him that he will be her slave and instructs the small girl to close her eyes. Kaiyuka then adds that with her expertise, Yuuki's power will be increased, and they may have a chance to escape alive. Yuuki cannot believe she wants him to combat the demons, yet Kaiyuka mistreats him. She then tells him it's time to bow down, and she extends her finger to him. For some weird reason, he transforms into a dog and licks it. Suddenly, he unleashes a massive surge of power, transforming into this wish-made monster. The other girls enter, surprised to learn that their commander has converted him into her slave. Yuuki chops through a demon, and things have turned out far better than Kaiyuka could have anticipated. Kaiyuka mounts him, and Yuuki begins ripping all of the demons to pieces. Kaiyuka is astounded by how quick he is. Kaiyuka reunites the younger siblings, but everyone is surprised as the demons combine to form a massive demon. She instructs him to crush the monster, and Yuuki avoids all of its assaults and trims the top of the demon's body. The monster explodes, and Kaiyuka loses her power, returning Yuuki to his ugly and loser self. She admits that she never imagined an average loser could develop into such a beast. She intends to make him her slave, but first she needs to finish using her abilities. She kisses his face and calls him a pervert. She goes on to explain that every time she utilizes her talent, she is required to reward the slave, and the payment must be equal to the job her slave performs each time he completes a chore. Yuuki cannot believe his reward is a kiss. Kaiyuka claims he worked hard out there and promises to give him another one. Yuuki freaks out and Kaiyuka admits that she wasn't expecting the situation either. When the Shuki were her slaves, all they sought was slices of pork as a reward. But Yuuki is a horrible pervert and she discloses that her body responds involuntarily in these situations regardless of how she feels about them. It's the price she has to pay for her ability, so she lands another kiss on him. 
Kayoyuka suddenly becomes serious, stating that if even one of the Shuki appeared in the actual world, there would be dozens of casualties. Her ambition is to become Supreme Commander and eradicate the horrible beasts for good. The present Supreme Commander is a failure and far too lenient. But with Yuuki's assistance, she is confident that she will achieve her aim. However, Yuuki admits that he is solely confident in his ability to maintain a house tidy. That isn't a problem because she now needs a housekeeper. Yuuki thinks he's doomed in the real world, so he chooses to be a hero in motto and exact revenge for his sister's death. They then proceed to the Demon Defense Military Dorm, where he prepares to join the military. However, Kayuka introduces him as the caretaker. She says that he will be her slave during battle, but he is the girl's caretaker in the dorm. Yuuki is unhappy since he thought he was going to join the Demon Defense Force, but Kayoyuka explains that men are not permitted to join. The girls don't waste time telling him to complete chores. Yuuki can't keep up, but Ni, the only decent one among them, assures him that everything will be fine. The others quickly remind out that the small girl is his superior and he should not disobey her. After a few days of work, Yuuki begins to believe that being a caretaker is worthless. He expresses his fears about performing chores all day, but Kayoyuka assures him that she would utilize him in battle as needed. She tells him to focus on housekeeping until then, and when he stands up for himself, Himari threatens to cut off his head. Kayoyuka understands that the others may be uncomfortable with a male caretaker, but Yuuki is good at cleaning and is also essential to her abilities. She requests that they all be courteous to him and warns him not to worry because she will rip off his manhood if he does anything wrong. That night Shushu, who had shrunk to a midget, caught Yuuki spying on one of the females and threatened to inform the commander. Shushu says that her power allows her to expand and shrink and she snaps an incriminating photo. She was inquisitive about Yuuki and has been keeping a careful eye on him. Yuuki tries to explain that he is only cleaning, but she isn't interested in any of his excuses. She wants him to be her slave, but he attempts to explain that he already is. Shushu pushes him to tidy her room and his attempt to remove the image fails. She tells him to clean her laundry as well, but this only gives her another opportunity to shoot a deceptive photo. While Yuuki is walking about, depressed about being bullied, he notices Kayoyuka and Himari practicing outside. Just then, Ashuki enters and Kayoyuka takes advantage of the chance to show Himari how to do it. She destroys the beast, surprising Yuuki and astounding Himari. Yuuki can't believe she and Stock killed it, and he realizes he'll never be on her bad side. Ni informs that she will be departing with Himari for a meeting, leaving him with Shushu to protect the dorm. That night, Shushu forces him to massage her and discloses that she grew up without a father. She came to Mato seeking excitement, even if it meant jeopardizing her life. The two decide to play some video games, but Yuuki warns her that he is quite talented. They make a little bet, but he loses each game and eventually loses his clothes. Just then, a massive Shuki comes and attacks the base's barrier, forcing the two to run outside. Shushu demonstrates her immense size by effortlessly grabbing the creature and smashing it into the ground. Shushu then sends it soaring, only to punch it down and smash it under her feet. Shushu shrinks slightly, as being that big is tiresome. She celebrates her win, but another massive blob of a creature attacks her. A slew of Shuki fused with it to make it even bigger, and Shushu attempted to use her ability to expand even further, but it failed. The monster grabs her and delivers a punch. Yuuki can only watch the gigantic creature gain the upper hand. Yuuki desires he could morph, but this is impossible without Kayoyuka. He recalls that he turned after licking Kayoyuka's palm. This genius has the bright notion of licking anything she owns, so he rushes back inside the house. He tries it with her glove or shirt, but it barely affects a portion of his body before he discovers her boot. Yuuki rushes out with Kayuka's boot and gives it a nice lick as things worsen outside. Power begins to erupt from his body and he rushes for the creature. Shushu notices him and restrains the monster, giving Yuuki the perfect opportunity to unleash a powerful kick that destroys the creature's head and wins the battle. Kyoko then rewards Yuuki by massaging his body, knowing that forcing a transition on his body will have some unpleasant consequences. The others tease him for being in this position after battling for a few seconds, but he explains that he simply hasn't learned how to use his ability yet. Still, he wonders if this is his recompense for guarding the dormitory. Even yet, Kayoyuka chastises Shushu for underestimating their opponent and assigns her to assist Yuuki with his chores as punishment. 
When everyone leaves, Shushu explains that she has even more images and will continue to be Yuuki's master. Yuuki knows how horrible things have gotten for him and wonders if he will ever be free. A mysterious girl is also mounting a large Shuki and claims to feel Yuuki's presence somewhere in Mato. A portal opens up at the 5th squad base and Kayoyuka and Yuuki step through it. Kayoyuka tells Yuuki to wait for her outside while she takes care of some paperwork. While waiting Yuuki is surprised by how much time they saved using interdimensional travel. Kayoyuka meets him outside and he can't help but admire her since she's not wearing her uniform anymore. She catches him staring and he quickly changes the topic. He's happy they are back in their home world and Kayoyuka tells him to enjoy it while it lasts. They leave the base and Yuuki goes back to admiring Kayoyuka again. She tells him to keep his eyes on the road and he asks her where they are going. She just turns and keeps walking, leaving Yuuki standing there, unsure of his next move. Meanwhile, Shushu is looking for Yuuki around the house. She asks Ni about his whereabouts, and she tells her he went out with Kayuka earlier that day. This makes Shushu look at the date on her phone, and then she understands why Yuuki went with Kayuka. Kayuka and Yuuki arrive at a memorial monument dedicated to the victims of the Mato mishap. Kayuka tells Yuuki there was an incident in Oisawa where scores of Shuki wandered into the human world. There was one particularly strong Shuki, and she remembered the day very clearly. Fire is raising the town as the huge Shuki chases and crushes its inhabitants. Kayoyuka remembered the Shuki had a single horn that really stuck out on its head. This made her name the creature Unihorn. She thought all the Shuki who crossed over that day were destroyed by the demon defense force who came to their aid. But when she looked through the records, she found out the Unihorn managed to escape back through the gateway to Mato. She tells Yuuki she has a score to settle with that particular Shuki since it's still alive. She tells him to be prepared for when that day comes because she's going to make mincemeat out of him. She promises to avenge everyone who lost their lives on the day of the incident. She lays down her flower in the gravestone and then kneels to pay her respects. They leave the memorial ground and Kayuka tells Yuuki it's time they return to Mato. Yuuki steps her outside a cafe and asks her if they can take a break. He did some research on the cafe and he found out it's famous for its parfaits. Kayoyuka tries to convince him that the job comes first, but he pulls up the cafe's catalog and shows her their parfait. It wins her over and she tells Yuuki they can make a short stop. They enter the cafe and take a seat. Kayoyuka tells Yuuki she's concerned about Yado and he tells her he also lost his sister at the Yado mishap so he understands how she feels. He tells her she will miss her chance to get revenge if she doesn't take care of herself properly. He tells her to take a break once in a while to cool off some steam. She gives in to his persuasion as their order arrives. She decides to give it a try and she absolutely loves it. She takes another spoon with a smile which reminds Yuuki of his sister. He remembers when he gave her a recipe suggestion and she loved the outcome. She hugged Yuuki, commending for being a smart cook and gave his new recipe a thumbs up of approval. She tells him to keep it up because boys are defined by their kitchen skills. Kayoyuka asks him if he won't be eating, and this snaps him back to the present. He takes a few reflexive scoops and he testifies of the goodness of the cafe's parfait. Suddenly, the conch shell horn blows once through Kayoyuka's phone. This signifies an emergency from Mato. If the conch shell horn goes off just once it means the emergency isn't life-threatening. Regardless, Kayuka tells Yuuki they need to head back immediately because something is definitely up. Yuuki uses his ability to give Kayoyuka a ride back to their base in no time. Yuuki is burned out from the ride and Kayuka tells him she's going to change back into her uniform. She asks him for his help and he gladly provides it. She puts on her uniform and they both go into the main room. Kayuka asks for a situation report and Mei tells her about the discoveries that were made during patrol. Some crater-like formations appeared some kilometers to the south, along with a large number of Shuki. Mei uses her recon ability to project the location of the discovery on a tab placed on the table. There were a lot of red dots around the location, indicating the number of Shuki that appeared. Yuuki is shocked by the sheer number of red dots showing on the screen. Even Kayoyuka had never seen so many Shuki appear at once before. Mei tells Kayoyuka the Shuki must be a nest because they weren't making any moves to leave the area. Himari apologizes for ruining Kayuka's day off, but Kayuka tells her it's necessary. She tells them they would take up the task of eradicating the Shuki and Yuuki is so hyped to hear this. They head out on three vehicles, with Yuuki acting as one of the vehicles. 
He pushes forward with Kaioyuka and they arrive at the location before everyone else. He sees the nest of Shuki and tells Kaioyuka they need to clear it as soon as possible to prevent casualties. Kaioyuka tells him he shouldn't rush into it but to wait for her signal. They need the squad's perfect teamwork to eliminate the swarm of Shuki effectively. Shushu first uses her ability to turn into a giant and crush the monsters. She gives the signal to Himari who does a drive-by on the monsters. Kaioyuka tells Yuuki it would be easier to take the monsters down when they merge. Though the Shuki are strong, their fighting style is very simplistic. Kaioyuka was convinced they would be able to take them down with their strategy when the monsters reached peak size. She tells Yuuki to be ready for battle at any time. Suddenly, a huge energy beam passes overhead towards Shushu. They try to warn her, but she's too slow and she can't dodge it. She's knocked down by the blast. Everyone turns to look at the source of the energy blast. The fog shifts to reveal the Shuki with an exceptionally long horn. Yuuki and Kaioyuka immediately recognize him as the Unihorn. The Unihorn jumps towards Himari who tries to fire at it from her vehicle, but the Unihorn blocks her bullets. The Unihorn destroys her vehicle, but she jumps out of it on time. Ayaba, who is riding the Unihorn, tells them she has come to join the party. Himari accuses her of being a monster, and she doesn't take to comment too well. She fires a beam at Himari, but Himari blocks it and redirects it to the sky. While Ayaba is enjoying the sight of her purple beam in the sky, Kaioyuka and Yuuki try to catch her by surprise. She predicts their move and blocks their strike. Kaioyuka is fired up now that she has found the Unihorn after so many years. Yuuki recognizes the Unihorn as the monster that attacked Kaioyuka's village when she was younger. He notices that both Shushu and Himari are lying on the floor after the monster's attack. Kaioyuka asks Ayaba who she is and Ayaba claims to be the Demon Defense Force's archenemy. She shows Kaioyuka a motto peach and asks her if she has seen her little brother. Kaioyuka is surprised there are more people like Ayaba around the location. Ayaba tosses the peach into the air to distract Kaioyuka and she tries to attack them from the side. Yuuki isn't doesn't fall for it and he counters her attack. He's knocked by, but he swings the chain around his neck to launch Kaioyuka towards Ayaba for another attack, but Ayaba kicks her away. Kaioyuka lands on Yuuki's shoulder, but Ayaba doesn't give her a chance to recuperate. She rushes with her unihorn and knocks Yuuki and Kaioyuka to the ground. She tells them a story about her brother and Yuuki still cannot believe Shuki can talk. He concludes she must be very different from the rest. She wants to tell them her brother's name when she's interrupted by a huge Shuki. She is pissed off by this and she crushes the monster in an instant which surprises both Kaioyuka and Yuuki. She offers some bits of the monster to the Unihorn, and this makes Kaioyuka realize she's the commander of the monsters. Kaioyuka and Yuuki try to attack again, but Ayaba dodges it easily. She tells Kaioyuka she knows nothing about Mato. She feints an attack, which makes both Yuuki and Kaioyuka dodge into the air, and she takes advantage of this to knock back Kaioyuka. She uses her hair to capture Yuuki and brings him closer. She thought he was a Shuki, but she realizes that he isn't, and she's frozen by this revelation. In her moment of confusion, Kaioyuka attacks her and gives her a cut. She tries to attack her again, but the Unihorn blocks her attack. They immediately turn tail and run away from Kaioyuka. She decides she will tear them apart from behind, just like the Unihorn did to the fleeing villagers years ago. She calls to Yuuki telling him Ayaba is about to escape and angrily asking him why he's not chasing after them. She looks back to see him battling off some Shuki going to attack Shushu. He picks her up as Kaioyuka fights off more Shuki before picking Himari. Kaioyuka tells Yuuki they need to pull back because the safety of Himari and Shushu comes first. Kaioyuka wonders why she let her rage take over her so much that it almost cost her the life of her team. Yuuki takes them back to their base for treatment. Kaioyuka is glad that their injuries are minor and they will be healed anytime soon. She gives Kaioyuka his reward and tells him she has some things to discuss with him about the last battle. He tells her he also has something to say to her concerning it. He apologizes for letting the Unihorn get away and she tells him he made the right choice saving their squad mates because their lives are more important. She tells him the humanoid riding the Shuki must be a very new species. She still cannot believe a Shuki is advanced enough to speak human language. Yuuki tells her his sister who went missing during the Mato mishap resembled the new species of Shuki they saw on the battlefield. Kaioyuka asks him if he thinks the new species is his sister. He tells her it's just a feeling he had during the battle. He tells her the humanoid also had a strange expression when she saw his face. 
She tells him the humanoid did say something about looking for her little brother. But she tells him no human could be as strong as the humanoid was. She also tells him nobody had ever heard of a human becoming a Shuki. She tells him they'll definitely cross paths with the Unihorn and humanoid again because they won't stop looking for them. While making dinner, Yuuki thought about the humanoid. He wonders if it's really his sister or if it's just a very powerful Shuki. He's trying to figure out what to say when next he comes across the humanoid when Mei enters the kitchen. She points out that the pot is about to boil over and he snaps back to reality. He turns off the cooker and Ni asks him to kneel before her. She praises him for handling himself during battle and she offers to make dinner since he's tired, though she's not a very good cook. He thanks her but tells her he has enough strength to make dinner. Yuuki decides to find out if the humanoid is his sister or not when they next meet. But before then, he knew he had to focus on the work at hand. Meanwhile, another humanoid shames Ayaba for coming back with injuries. Ayaba tells her she was taken by surprise as Koko licks the wound to heal it. She tells the humanoid she met Yuuki, but she doesn't know how he ended up looking like a Shuki. She wonders if it was the effect of Kaiyuka, or if it was a result of experiments done on him. Regardless, she was happy with the reunion. Yuuki is having a hot bath, thinking about the power of the Unihorn and the potential result of their next battle. Suddenly, Shushu pops up from behind, and she thanks him for saving her life. She decides to pay him back with a back rub, but Yuuki turns around and doesn't like what he sees. He rushes out of the bathroom only to run into trouble with Himari. She chases him around the base and corners him. Suddenly, a portal opens and two women step through. Yuuki thinks they are intruders, but Himari tells him they are members of the 6th squad. Izumo is the commander of the 6th squad, and Azuma is the second in command. Izumo asks Yuuki to fetch Kayoyuka as Himari, and Azuma exchange unpleasant glances. Kayoyuka asks her why Tenka visited them, and she tells her the squadrons will cooperate because of the appearance of a humanoid Shuki. Yachiho makes fun of Himari for fainting during the attack, and tells her to forget about being a soldier and go back home. Kayuka notices Himari is fuming, and she tells Tenka there's a need to test each of their teams. She asks for an exhibition match between their squads. Yuuki thinks the exhibition match is some kind of baseball league, but Mei explains it to him. The exhibition match is a contest of strength and skill between two squadrons. Kayuka proposes single combat between members of the squads and Tenka accepts it. A portal opens up, and they leave the squad base. Himari asks Kayoyuka to train her in preparation for the match. Kayoyuka tells Himari the training would be physically demanding but Himari tells her she would do anything to make sure she wins. Himari turns to Yuuki and she claims him as her slave for the meantime. Yuuki asks her why he was made to become her slave and she tells him she has to win her match by all means. Later in the day, Himari and Yuuki take a ride out into Shuki territory. While on the road, Himari tells him transforming her body into weapons isn't her main ability, but she uses it because it's compatible. She shows him her phone and tells him that's her real ability. There's a picture of Kaiyuka on the screen, and she tells him her special ability is learning other people's abilities and using them. She selects the person's ability she wants on her phone to implement it. Because Kaiyuka's ability was selected on her phone, that was what she was currently using. Yuuki asks her if she knows the risks of using Kayoyuka's skills. She tells him she knows it would be physically demanding, and she's ready for that. Suddenly, the ground breaks up and some Shuki appear in front of them. They get out of the car, and she extends her hand out to Yuuki. He tells her to remember his warning and transforms, but he's in a different shape compared to his usual one. A Shuki attacks him, but he dodges quickly and counters. Yuuki can move even faster than he does with Kayoyuka, but he notices he's not as strong as he usually is. He decides to rush at the Shuki and beat them till they drop. Himari is convinced she'll be able to beat her sister with it. After defeating the Shuki, Yuuki transforms back to his human form. She commends him for a job well done, but she suddenly loses control of her body. Yuuki tells her it's the price to pay for Kayoyuka's abilities. Himari finally understands what Kayoyuka meant when she said it'll be physically demanding. She asks him if she'll remain stuck like that, and he tells her she won't be free till he gets his reward. They get back into the vehicle and start heading back to their base. Yuuki advises her to use a different ability, and she tells him she doesn't have any other choice. Her ability degrades the quality of most abilities to the point where they are almost ineffective. The price for using Kayoyuka's ability isn't very good, but she has no choice. She explains Tifat she was born into the prestigious Azuma family. 
her elder sisters were so successful and everyone also had hopes for Himri. But she always got nervous or sick before major events in her life which made her fail at them. Her family members started noticing these occurrences, they began teasing her for not being able to keep up. She tells him this is her first chance of proving her family wrong. She tells him her ultimate goal is to become a hero like Kayoyuka and she feels defeating Yachiho is the first step in that direction. She tells Yuuki they are still missing a finishing move for the exhibition match. Yuuki feels Himari may be the key to opening a new door in his life and he'll also get to assist Kayoyuka along the way. He agrees to help Himari and she tells him to drop the attitude since he's just a slave. Yuuki asks her what Yachiho's abilities are and she tells him she has the ability to control time. She can freeze it and even rewind it, an ability she named Golden Hour. Yachiho's abilities require a lot of power and she'll get tired if she uses it many times. Despite her ability being dangerous, Himari thinks they'll have an opportunity to win. She tells him Yachiho strikes a pose to use her ability and he tells her they'll just have to be faster and take her down before she has a chance to do so. They decide to use an attack too fast to allow Yachiho to use her abilities. Yuuki decides to use a fast super punch and Himari tells him to try channeling his strength into a part of his body. He concentrates and channels his strength into his legs and several shuki appear as if on cue. Yuuki is even faster than he was before, but his punches are weaker than that of a five-year-old. He transforms back and he notices his legs are very weak. He tells Himari he overdid it and she tells him they'll continue to experiment till they get it right. Kayuka meets them and commends Himari for coming up with a technique for Yuuki. She tells her she's staying too far away from him, reminding her of the essence of her ability. Himari remembers it and she immediately jumps on Yuuki's back. She orders him to defeat Ashuki and he defeats it in one strike. After practice, Yuuki is even more exhausted than usual. She tells him they need to practice more to make his attacks more precise. She gives him his reward and he gets fired up. They train and practice over a couple of days to improve the consistency of their attacks. The day of the exhibition match finally arrives. They arrive at the venue of the match with both squads gathered. The referee named Gina activates a barrier that can heal any damage they take inside. Gina announces the first battle between Himari and Yachiho, and she tells them whoever gives up or gets knocked down first loses. Yachiho promises to drag Himari back home as her special slave when she wins. Himari tells her she's not the same person she was. Yuuki transforms and she tells Yachiho she would be using him because he's part of her ability. Yachiho tries talking smack, but she's hit with an attack that sends her flying. She wonders where she was hit from and uses her ability to rewind time by 5 seconds. Himari notices she's tired and she asks Yuuki to stick to the strategy they came up with if they can't finish Yachiho with one blow. Yet Yachiho is about to show Himari the power of her new ability called Prime Time. Yuuki then jumps into the air and Yachiho whips out a gun. The gun is modified to be used in Mado and Himari was expecting her to use it as her main weapon. Yachiho thinks it was foolish for them to jump into the air because they become sitting ducks for her. She freezes time during their descent and blasts them to smithereens. Himari sees through her plans and she tugs on Yuuki's chain, telling him to do what they planned. He he kicks off the air to generate breakneck speed. Yachiho can react but gets injured by the attack. She rewinds time by 5 seconds to just before the aerial attack. She is impressed with how much the attack strategy Himari came up with. She uses her ability to freeze time for 5 seconds, but when she looks around she can't find Himari. She then sees her out of range of her skill. She realizes that Himari is changing her attack patterns to counter her powers. She decides to run towards her and Himari decides rush at Yachiho making Yuuki run circles around her. Yachiho just stands there, feeling confused about what to do next. Yuuki could feel how much Himari wanted to win against Yachiho. He remembers how she said winning the match would change her and he decides to do his best to help her win. He increases his speed so much that he leaves after images of himself. Yachiho tries to follow Yuuki's path and she fires her gun. But Himari reads her attack and she tells Yaki to jump just in time to dodge the bullet. He kicks off the air again to gain momentum and he dives at Yachiho but she dodges. She regains her balance but Yuuki prepares for another attack. Yuuki notices Yachiho is mad and he's glad they were able to throw her off balance and make her lose her composure just like they planned. Tenka thinks Yuuki and Himari came prepared for the match and she loves how interesting it has become. 
Tenka assumes Yuuki's servitude was solely to Kayoyuka, but she's surprised he can devote himself to someone besides her. Yuuki is keeping up his speed to prevent Yachiho from landing her attacks and Himuri is surprised, he's giving his all to make sure she wins. She didn't expect so much from him, and she decided to apologize to him for giving him such a hard time during their training. Himuri knows Yachiho's golden hour attack can't be activated instantaneously. Yachiho has to strike her weird pose to trigger it, and they use that to determine their next action. Also, if she notices that Yachiho is tired all of a sudden, she knows she just used her attack. Yuuki tries a surprise attack from behind Yachiho, but she dodges. She tries to counter with her gun, but Yuuki jumps out of the way. Himuri plans plans to make Yachiho waste all her energy and then win the match. Yet Yachiho vows to win the match and drag Himuri back home to be her slave for eternity. She points her gun up, and she strikes her pose. Himuri figures out that she's going to freeze time, but since there's some distance between them, she thinks they're safe. She's shocked to see Yachiho use her prime time ability to freeze time for 10 seconds. This freezes everyone around her, including members of the squads spectating the match. She begins running towards them and shoots them four times, and then she releases her ability. Both Yuuki and Himuri are hurt by the bullets, and they fall to the ground. Yachiho heaves a sigh of exhaustion, and she explains her ability to them. When she strikes to pose for her prime time ability, she's able to double the amount of time she can control. Yachiho knew that Himuri would try to dodge at that distance if she made a show of striking her pose. Himuri wonders how Yachiho got so much stronger, and Yachiho tells her, she's a genius who can't help but get stronger over time. Himuri stays on the ground, gritting her teeth in pain. Yachiho knows that when Himuri uses her learning skill on an ability that comes with a cost, she can't switch skills until she pays the price. That's why Himuri can't just switch between skills during a battle. Yachiho tells Himuri to remember when she wasn't good enough to impress their family in the past. She tells her nothing has changed after so many years. Himuri wonders if she'll become a laughingstock again. She can't believe all her efforts were not enough, but Yuuki tells her not to let Yachiho's mind games get to her. He tells her to look at Yachiho's face and see that the attack took a huge toll on her. Yuuki tells her he'll be disappointed in her if she does something as stupid as quitting now that they are so close to victory. She gets back up and mounts Yuuki. She promises to punish him once the battle is over for having such a smart mouth. Yachiho tells Himuri to give up and not embarrass her commander, but Himuri tells her staying strong and fighting to the end isn't considered an embarrassment in their squad. Yachiho isn't happy to see that she wasn't able to break Himuri's. Himuri tells Yaki to attack just like they practiced in training. Yachiho strikes her pose and rewinds time by 5 seconds. She raises her gun to shoot, but she can't see Himuri because Yuuki's behind is very dark. She fires behind Yuuki, thinking Himuri will be there, but her ability releases and she gets hit on her neck. Yachiho is surprised when she looks down to see that Himuri just shot her. She tells her she didn't think Himuri was that desperate for the win, and she and Yuuki both collapse. Jina declares Himuri the winner of the match, and the other members of the 7th Squadron commend her and Yaki for winning. Kaiuka figures out that they used the flash and smoke from Yuuki's transformation to blind Yachiho. She silently commends them. Sahara is surprised Yachiho lost, but Tenka tells her it's an opportunity for Yachiho to learn from her mistakes. Everyone is worried about Yuuki, but Kayayuka tells them there's no need to worry. Yuuki wakes up to see he's being healed by Jinna. She tells him she's able to heal him because he sustained the injuries in her barrier. Jinna heals Yachiho, and she opens her eyes to see Yuuki and Himuri celebrating their victory. She remembers when they were little and Himuri caught a cold before her entrance exams because she overworked herself. Yachiho tells Himuri she has gotten much stronger and she'll treat her better henceforth. She asks Himuri if she wants to rejoin the Azuma family and Himuri is surprised by her question. She tells Yachiho she belongs in the 7th Squadron. Yuuki and Himuri walk back to their base. Yuuki is about to get something to drink when Himuri stops him to give him his reward. The 6th Squadron goes back to their quarters and Tenka begins a review of Yachiho's battle. She tells her that Yuuki was probably holding back his attack and that her decision-making during the match was poor. Tenka is impressed with how much Yuuki pushed to ensure Himuri was victorious. She thinks he's exactly what a slave should be. Himuri tells Yuuki he was the reason she was able to defeat her sister. She thanks him for helping her, and she tells him she's not just thanking him because it's his reward, but because she means it. She begins giving him his reward and Yuuki gets uncomfortable and pulls away. 
she tells him she has no choice because she has to give him his reward, and she continues. Yuuki can't believe how soft her lips are. He asks her if she's sure she made the right decision not to return home. She tells him that Kayaluka helped her when things were tough so she'll stick by her side. She continues giving him his reward and Yuuki feels like he's on his way to heaven. Shushu is outside the door and now understands why they said Kayuka's skill is physically demanding. The preparations for the next match are about to begin and Yachiho apologizes to Sahara for losing her match. Meanwhile, some menacing figures are gathered somewhere in Mato watching them silently. Jina announces that Shushu will be going against Sahara. They both specialize in hand-to-hand -hand combat and Jina was sure the battle was going to be intense. Shushu tells Yuuki to watch how she'll pummel Sahara like the Hulk, smashing a piece of watermelon. She hopes to get a piece of that pie after the match. She turns back to wink at him. Since they both love close combat, Shushu proposes they hold off their abilities till later. Sahara immediately rushes at Shushu with a furious flying kick, but Shushu catches her mid-air and slam her on the ground. She tries to land an elbow drop on Sahara, but she dodges away and Shushu hurts her elbow. Sahara grabs Shushu from behind and she lands a perfect German suplex. Shushu gets back on her feet, but Sahara is already exhausted. She thinks the match has gone long enough and she decides to use her abilities. Shushu is surprised she opted to use them so early, so she decides to use hers as well. Shushu increases in size while Sahara increases her strength for three minutes. Shushu tries to squash her, but she jumps out of the way and she counters by landing a huge smack on her. Sahara's ability only allows her to increase her strength for a specified number of minutes. She can activate it for a minimum time of 1 minute and a maximum of 60 minutes. The shorter the duration, the stronger she gets, but the ability has a 3 minute cooldown period. Shushu decides to stomp Sahara, but Sahara gets out of range and she pushes Shushu's ankle. Sahara tells Shushu her size makes it easy for her to dodge her attacks and it makes her an easy target. She throws several rocks at Shushu, and while Shushu is distracted by the rocks, she launches a surprise attack. She lands a body punch that sends Shushu to the ground. Sahara asks her if she's ready to give up yet, but Shushu refuses. Shushu remembers when her friends told her having a boyfriend was fun. Back then, Shushu was skeptical about having a boyfriend. Her first friend told her there was never a boring moment when she was around her boyfriend. Shushu told them she wasn't interested in romance because she wanted something more exciting. She told them she'd never get bored if she went to Mato and her friends are surprised she doesn't understand the need for romance. Shushu looks over at Yuuki and she hopes he keeps an eye on her as she gets back on her feet. Sahara advises her to get a smaller form because she'll have an easier time moving around. She tells her the importance of situation assessment so she can tailor her abilities accordingly. Shushu tells her having a small size is too boring. She rushes at her and her motto is to go big or go home. She activates her ability again to make herself even bigger, almost breaking her limit. She falls on Sahara, hoping to crush her with her weight, but Sahara is too powerful. She bears the weight of Shushu and Shushu decides to grab her while she's struggling to hold her up. She condescendingly tells Sahara she is too big for her to deal with. She slams Sahara into the ground and Sahara passes out. Shushu eases up on her abilities so she can catch her breath. Ni and Yuuki are convinced that Shushu has won her match. Jina goes over to do the countdown, but she stops at two. Shushu is to see Sahara back on her feet. Sahara activates her abilities once again, they find out that her killer instincts take over her body even if she's unconscious. During this period, her body can fight on its own, even when she remains unconscious, yet she goes berserk and doesn't know who's friend or enemy. Sahara rushes at Shushu while she's still catching her breath and she tosses her like a sack of tissue paper. Shushu passes out and Jina declares Sahara the winner. Mi and Yuuki rush over to Shushu while Jina is healing her, wondering if she'll be alright. Shushu regains consciousness and Kayuka calls her over. She apologizes for losing her match and Kayuka tells her they'll discuss how she can improve later. Shushu starts crying on her way to change her clothes. She's sad she looked bad during battle and Yuuki saw the whole thing. She's in her room feeling sad when Yuuki knocks on the door. He asks her to let him know if she needs anything. She tells him to erase her memories of the match because her performance was pitiful. Yuuki tells her that though she lost, he didn't think her performance was pitiful. He tells her he wished he saw more of her wrestling moves and Shushu tells him he would have if Sahara had played along. 
She gets an idea, and she tells Yuuki to close his eyes for a second. She opens the door, and she gets her reward. Yuuki breaks away surprised, and she tells him she's trying to deal with her shock. She told him to cover for the fact that she likes him. She couldn't tell him that till she made him like her back. Back at the battle barrier, Mi is using her recon ability and sees two humanoid Shuki. Kayuka asks her if she saw something. Before she can answer, several Shuki emerge from the ground. They attack Jina's barrier, and she tells them not to worry because her barrier is unbreakable. A humanoid tells her that her barrier is absurdly weak, it can't be considered a barrier. Everyone is surprised to see a humanoid Shuki. Raren the humanoid breaks through the barrier and keeps approaching them. Tenka teleports the non-combatants to the door. Everyone engages the Shuki in battle and Yuuki and Shushu join up with Kayuka. Shushu uses her ability to defeat a lot of Shuki. She's about to get jumped from behind, but Sahara comes to her rescue. She tells Shushu to continue with her crowd attack while she covers her back and they form a two-man wrecking crew. Raren sees them, but he decides they aren't who he's looking for so he changes his direction. Himari uses her ability to bring out a machine gun, which she fires at him, but he blocks the bullet's matrix style. But he decides to burn her to a nice crisp to teach her a lesson. He conjures lightning which strikes her, but Yachiho saves her. Raren figures out she was able to help Himari because of her time abilities and Yachiho tells him he'll pay for his attack. Himari rushes over to Kayoyuka, and she asks to ride Yuuki with her. Yuuki is surprised by this because it has never been tried before but Kayoyuka agrees. She has a feeling he'll get even stronger if he's bonded to both of them. He forms a new pack with Himari and his two forms merge. A huge Shuki is approaching them and Kayuka sees it as a chance to test Yuuki's new power. He channels his energy to his mouth and he releases a devastating blast that destroys the Shuki. Himari is surprised by Yuuki's increased abilities when two masters are riding him. Himari is worried about Yachiho and Kayuka tells her not to worry because Tenka will protect her. Mi is giving Tenka the report of her recon mentioning she saw two additional humanoids. Tenka teleports back to the battle to see Yuuki in his more powerful form. She decides not to let Kayuka outshine her, and they both decide to give everyone a commander showdown. Ashuki attacks Kayuka while she's riding Yuuki, and she makes quick work of it. Typically, Shuki cannot be defeated with normal weapons. The power of motto granted by the Peaches or weapons imbued with the Peaches' power are the only ways to defeat the Shuki. But Kayoyuka is an exception to those rules. She trained atop a sacred mountain to perfect a unique style of combat that destroys Shuki. She was able to gain the ability to destroy Shuki without relying on her peach power, and that was how she was able to become the commander of a squadron. Kayoyuka and Yuuki continue to lay waste to the Shuki horde. Raren tries to strike Yachiho with lightning, but she freezes time and dodges out of the way. He releases a beam of energy from his mouth that takes off part of Yachiho's left hand. He figured out that she couldn't use her ability without striking her pose. She tells him she can strike her pose regardless of the number of limbs she loses. Ste triggers her ability to rewind time and get back her hand. Raren decides to finish her off with a huge attack now that Yachiho is exhausted and she can hardly move. She raises her gun in one last effort to bring him down when Tenka appears out of nowhere. She commends Yachiho for holding her own. She tells Yachiho to take it easy while she battles Raren. Raren tells her they can't take it easy because his army of Shuki is behind her. Tenka wonders what army he's referring to. The smoke clouds from the battle clear and Raren sees his Shuki army burnt to ashes. Raren watches helplessly as the joint squadron lays waste to his army of Shuki. He's not happy that only two targets came out to face him after he waited patiently. He asks Tenka where the rest of his targets are but she doesn't reply. Tenka figures out that Raren is only after the squad commanders. Raren thinks he can defeat them all in the blink of an eye. He charges up a powerful energy beam that he releases from his palm. The beam clears everything in its path and Raren is disappointed at how weak Tenka turned out to be. He thinks Tenka is nothing more than a pest, but she suddenly launches a surprise attack and he dodges it. He's surprised a little pest is arrogant enough to try to attack him. He tells her his flesh is as strong as steel and her attack will be useless against him. He shoots several energy orbs out of his mouth, but Tenka teleports behind him. He tries to get her with a punch, but she dodges it and creates a black hole in his face. He's almost sucked into it, but he jumps out of its range, and he's surprised that Tenka was able to hurt him. Jinna and Ni are both impressed with how Tenka is taking on the humanoid. 
They're amazed at her ability to escape any attack, even if it's an ambush. They're in awe that both commanders were able to come up with a game plan to defeat the invading enemy in no time. Jinna is so hyped to be able to witness both Kaiyuka and Jinna in action. She's so pumped up that she shakes knee vigorously in her excitement. Raren has had enough of Tenka's impudence, so he decides to unleash his full power. He's suddenly surrounded by a blue aura which he releases into the sky, causing a huge lightning storm to strike at Tenka, creating a huge dust cloud. Raren is convinced that Tenka won't be able to survive his attack. Even Yuuki is worried that Tenka wouldn't survive, but Kaiyuka tells him not to worry about her. Raren is shocked to see that Tenka is still alive when the dust cloud clears. Tenka asks him if he thought the battle was over and lands a punch on him. He's surprised to see himself flying in the air after the punch, because she teleported him with her punch. Tenka teleports herself back to the ground, but she's surrounded by Shuki. She looks at Raren and sees he's in the perfect position for her next attack. Jinna is completely head over heels at the efficiency of Tenka's abilities. Tenka generates a huge black hole over Raren and the Shuki surrounding her. The hole sucks them all into it and then it implodes, wiping everything it sucked out of existence. Tenka can see that Raren's tough skin is useless when she rips apart the fabrics of time and space. Yuuki is surprised by how easily Tenka took down the elite Shuki troops and Himari tells him it's expected of her since she's a commander. She tells him the commanders are on an entirely different level compared to them. Yuuki thinks Kaiyuka is a tad bit too ambitious if she aims to be the supreme commander in charge of all the squad commanders. Kaiyuka laughs off his comment and reiterates that she'll become the supreme commander. Yuuki is convinced that she'll be able to make it to that rank. Kaiyuka commands Sahara and Shushu to take care of any stragglers that survived the battle. Yuuki decides to stop laughing at Kaiyuka's ambitions and become the hero he made his mind up to become. After the battle, they gather at the squad base and Kaiyuka gives everyone a battle report. Though they were able to defeat the Shuki army, Ni's report told them that there were other enemy generals present. Himuri tells them they searched the surrounding area, but they couldn't find them. Shushu thinks that Tenka's blast took them out, but Tenka tells her the humanoids were too peculiar to be taken out by an obvious attack. Ni apologizes for detecting the enemies too late, even with her foresight ability. Kayuka tells her not to worry about it because the enemy probably had a cloaking technique. Tenka commends her for discovering the enemy before they attacked, fording any potential for an ambush. Ni feels much better after this. Yuuki is enjoying the moment when Tenka suddenly calls out to him. She tells him he stole the show out on the battlefield, and he tells her she was way more impressive than he was. Jina suddenly rushes to him with a pen and paper. She tells him she was impressed with his display on the battlefield, and she's now convinced that boys aren't all that useless. She asks him for his autograph, and he's surprised by this. Tenka is happy that he got a new fan. Himari approaches Yachiho, and Yachiho asks her what she wants with some attitude. Himari thanks her for saving her from Raren's attack, and Yachiho tells her she did it because they are still family. She tells her she doesn't want her to bring more shame to the family name, and that's the only reason she saved her. She tells Himuri if she's feeling inadequate and looking for someone to train her, she'll gladly take it up. She tries convincing her to return home once again, but Himuri tells her the 7th Squadron is her home and Yachiho is heartbroken. The thought of the battle report that Kaiyuka would have to write is giving her a headache. Kaiyuka and Tenka both agree to call the exhibition match a draw. They were both looking forward to their one-on-one -on -one battle, but they're sad it wasn't able to happen. The 6th Squadron leaves the base and Yuuki decides to go take a shower. Before he can move, the ladies decide to give him his reward, and he's surprised by the variety presented to him. They're embarrassed to do it, but Kaiyuka thinks it's befitting since Yuuki took down a handful number of Shuki. Yuuki is surprised he's getting a two-in-one reward. Kaiyuka knows the price for using her abilities, but each time she's still surprised by it. They begin giving Yuuki a hot bath and Himuri is relieved that it's all they have to do. Yuuki tells her he just wanted to have a good bath after the battle. Himuri is still embarrassed she has to bathe him, but Kayuka asks him if he's more tired than usual. Yuuki tells her that having two masters took a lot more out of him. They decide to use his ability more lightly while also exploring its potential in the future. They tell him to get some rest in the dorm to get back his strength. Ni sketches the humanoids she saw during the exhibition match, and they all take a look at the picture. Shushu commends Ni's drawing but Kayuka notices that the humanoids are different from the ones they encountered previously. 
Yuuki remembers their encounter with Ayaba, and he wonders why she wasn't with them. He thinks she could be from a different squad, or there was another reason why she wasn't with the squad. He's soon overtaken by sleep, but as soon as he falls asleep, Tenka teleports into his room with a naughty smile on her face. Kayoyuka, Himuri, and Yuuki drive out into the Mado Expanse, and they soon arrive at the 6th Squadron Dorm. Yuuki notices that all the dorms look the same from the outside. Kayoyuka tells him the bases differ slightly on the interior. Tenka welcomes them to the dorm and Kayoyuka is happy to have a change of scenery. They walk inside and Tenka asks them if they had any trouble en route to their dorm. Tenka tells her they took down some shuki on the road, and that was all. Kayuka tells them she's going to have a meeting with Tenka. She tells Himari to acquaint herself with the 6th Squadron. Tenka tells her some of her members went for an expedition, but she can acquaint herself with those who are in the dorm. Yuuki knows he has to help out with the maintenance of the dorm. Tenka apologizes that he has to because their caretaker wasn't at the dorm. She tells him they'll be back by evening, and he only has to fill for them until then. Yuuki tells her he's glad to have the back of a fellow Demon Defense Force squad. Tenka tells him she'll be counting on him, and he tells her he'll get the work done. Yuuki gets his equipment, and he's about to begin cleaning. He looks around the dorm and finds that the place is already pretty clean. He sees a stain on a vase, and he has a feel of it. He decides on a situation to clean it up, and he decides to go for it. After cleaning, he decides to do laundry and tries to calm himself when he sees the kind of laundry he'll be doing. Though he has been doing the 7th Squadron laundry for a long time, he still hasn't gotten used to it. Meanwhile, Shushu is at the 7th Squadron dorm, wondering what Yuuki is up to. She's sad she wasn't able to tag along with him to the 6th Squadron dorm. She remembers their time of intimacy, and she remembers deciding to get him to like her first. She decides to use her time for self-improvement. She looks at her room and decides to begin by tidying it up first. Yuuki takes a package to Yachiho's door. He remembers her from the exhibition match and wonders what she'll say to him when she sees him. He summons enough courage to knock on her door, but nobody answers it. He concludes that she's not around, and he decides to leave the package in her room for her. He opens the door to find Yachiho's room filled with pictures of Himari in different poses at different stages of her life. Yuuki quickly drops the packages and bolts to the sitting room. He finds Sahara lying on the couch, and he wonders why she's asleep in the sitting room with such minimal clothing. He decides to cover her with a blanket so she doesn't catch a code, but she uses him as her blanket. He tries to break out of her grip before someone sees him in such acts, but he can't get out of it. He remembers that Sahara is a pro wrestler, and his chances of breaking out of her grip are slim to none. The more he tried to break out, the tighter she held on to him. Eventually, he saw that he couldn't break out, and he gave in to his fate. Sahara wakes up and apologizes to Yuuki. They walk down the corridor to find Himari standing at the door to a room. She tells them she's waiting for Yachiho to finish her workout so she can speak to her. She asks Sahara if Yachiho always works out like this, and Sahara tells her she does. Himari is surprised that Yachiho is pushing herself even harder than she normally does. Sahara asks her if she looks up to Yachiho and Himari tells her that though Yachiho has a terrible personality, she would like to be like her academically and athletically. Sahara tells her that her peach power arose from her urge to learn from Yachiho and Yachiho's powers emerged from her desire to spend more time with Himari. Himari tells her that her analogy is a huge stretch, but Sahara tells her she should talk to Yachiho more often. Yuuki agrees with her and Himari is finally convinced. She takes a face towel and walks to Yachiho on her workout bench. She presents the towel to her, but she takes it without a word of thanks and a friendly exchange of words begins. Sahara and Yuuki are relieved to see them getting along better with each other. Sahara suggests that they would get along more if they showed Himari Yachiho's room, but Yuuki tells her it's a bad idea. During their meeting, Kayoyuka tells Tenka they should make the first move and track down the humanoid Shuki since there have been no signs of them since the last attack. Kayoyuka tells her of a crater where they encountered a group of Shuki and the first humanoids. She tells her they should start up their investigation from there. Tenka agrees with her and tells her she's curious about the number of humanoids. She's certain of four humanoids, but Kayoyuka tells her she eliminated one of the four. Tenka tells her she's not sure she eliminated Rairn. The humanoids are gathered in their relaxation spot and Rairn suddenly walks in with a grimace on his face. Shikoku is glad to see he's made a full recovery. Before Raren was sucked into Tenka's black hole, he was saved by Shikuku. 
He tells Shikoku he could have continued the battle, but she tells him he already lost it once his Shuki army was destroyed. Shikoku fought with the 3rd squadron and she was able to defeat them easily because their commander wasn't around. They decided to interrupt the exhibition match to gauge the abilities of a squadron commander. Shikoku is impressed by the strength of the commanders and she tells Raren his plan to use their current resources to launch an attack is garbage. Raren tells her they can be beaten, but the other humanoid agrees with Shikoku. They decide to go with her plan to organize eight humanoids to launch an attack, but they'll keep operating in the shadows till then. Shikoku is marveled by the diversity of the humans' abilities. Kayauka concludes the meeting but Tenka tells her she has a request concerning personnel. She asks Tenka if she can keep Yuuki as her slave and Tenka is surprised. Kayauka is surprised by Tenka's request to give Yuuki over. Tenka tells her she's had an excellent academic life, but her private life has been quite dull, so she needs something to spice it up. She tells Kayoyuka she needs a pet that would help her relax after her day's work. She bribes Kayoyuka with her endorsement in the next commander elections if she agrees to share Yuuki. This surprises Kayoyuka. She tells Tenka she doesn't need her leverage to become commander because she wants to get it on her merit. Tenka doesn't like her response. Kayuka gets up to leave since the meeting is over but Tenka proposes she dates Yuuki in her free time. This stops Kayoyuka in her tracks and she looks back at Tenka with disgust. On their way back to base, Kayoyuka tells Yuuki that Tenka is interested in him. Yuuki is surprised that Tenka has taken a liking to him. Kayoyuka tells him she wants a companion and Himari figures out that Yuuki is going to be her pet. Yuuki doesn't like the idea. He tells Kayoyuka he's too busy being the caretaker for the 7th squadron. Kayoyuka is happy that Yuuki recognizes that they need him, but she tells him she doesn't have control over his private life, which was also what she told Tenka. Yuuki now understands, but he knows he doesn't have a lot of free time on his hands. They arrive at their base and the ladies go to the bathroom to take a hot bath. Yuuki goes to his bedroom and lies down in his bed because he's exhausted. Yuuki is happy that someone as pretty as Tenka wants him, but he doesn't want to be a pet because he strives to become a hero. Suddenly, a portal opens in his room and Tenka walks through it. Yuuki shouts in surprise, but Tenka shushes him. Tenka tells him she snuck out of her base to come and pay him a private visit. Yuuki is surprised by this, and she wonders if Kayuka didn't tell him about her crush on him. She tells him she would like him to become her boyfriend. Yuuki is shocked she doesn't want him to become her pet. She tells him she wants a normal relationship with him. She tells him she referred to him as a pet in Kayoyuka's presence because she thought he was so cute. She tells him his bravery won her over because she's a slave who's devoted to his master. She tells him she's also intrigued by his housekeeping skills and she sees him as a pet because he's so young. She tells him if he grows up and becomes strong, she may lavish him with all kinds of gifts. Yuuki can't believe his ears and he feels like he's having a slice of paradise. Tenka softly plants a kiss on his lips which makes her heart race. She has never felt anything like this in her life and she decides to get even more out of Yuki. She was hoping to do things the right way but she couldn't resist Yuuki's charms anymore. Things get heated and they both lose some pieces of clothing. She wonders if Yuuki's shirt is significant to him and he tells her it's a cheap old t-shirt that he has no attachment to. She immediately teleports his shirt away and Yuuki becomes embarrassed. He thinks that she's misusing her abilities, and he tries to get away from her, but she pins him down. She asks him to at least tell her if he'll go out with her. She gives him three options. The first is to accept. The second is to take time to think things over. And the third is to decline. Yuuki desperately accepts option two and Tenka can see that her approach is too sudden. She's glad he didn't flatly decline her offer, and she thinks she needs to do something to prevent him from slipping away from her. Shushu suddenly opens the door and catches them in their ungodly act. They immediately call a squad meeting to address the issue. Kayuka scolds Tenka for pouncing on Yuuki. She wonders why she became so aggressive and Kayuka tells her Yuuki cast a love spell on her. Though Kayuka said she wouldn't interfere with Yuuki's personal life, Shushu tells Tenka that sneaking into their dorm at night was inconsiderate. She tells her it is immoral for her to abuse her abilities. Kayoyuka dismisses the meeting, and she tells Tenka to return to her dorm. Tenka tells Yuuki goodbye before she leaves, but both Himari and Shushu are pissed at her. Yuuki is so worn out, but Kayoyuka tells him not to be late for practice the following morning. The next morning, Kayoyuka tells Ni and Shushu she wants to try lending her slave ability to them to help them prepare against attacks from the humanoid Shuki. 
Though they'll be able to ride Yuuki in his slave form, she knows his abilities will change depending on who's riding him. Himuri remembered that he looked different when they both rode him. Kayuka tells them if she can lend out her ability, it would increase the list of techniques they'll have available to them. Shushu is glad she gets the opportunity to combine her ability with Kayuka's ability. Kayuka tells Ni to give it a try first, and she gets on Yuuki's back. Kayuka orders her to grab the chains, and as soon as she does, several chains erupt from the ground and hold Yuuki. Yuuki breaks out of the chains, and he changes into form. Shusuch can see that his form is different from when Himuri rides him. Himuri is optimistic that Kayuka's strategy could work. Kayuka walks up to Yuki and asks him what he thinks about Ni's version. Yuuki tells her he needs to move around first, and he asks Ni if he can test it out. Ni tells him to do whatever he wants since she's holding on tight. Yuuki hops around and throws a few punches and kicks. He realizes that he's not as strong as he used to be and Himuri notices that he's also much slower than he was when she rode him. Yuuki tells them his senses feel sharper than ever before. He tells them his hearing and eyesight have improved drastically. They can see that it's linked to Ni's abilities. Yuuki decides to channel his power into his eyes and he gets X-ray vision. Himuri realizes that he can see through things, and she decides to hide her properties, but Shushu is glad she can see all she has to offer. Ni tells him to look away, and he quickly turns around. Kayoyuka can see that Yuuki gained X-ray vision, and she thinks it would be useful to sniff out hidden Shuki. But Kayuka doesn't like the toll using her ability takes on her. Unlike Himuri's learning skill, her ability takes a considerable amount of strength, and she doesn't know if it's worth it. Yuuki transforms back, and Ni suddenly kisses him on the cheek for his good work. Yuuki is surprised by this, but Ni tells him she couldn't help it because her body moved on its own. Yuuki tries to calm her down. Kayuka can see that it's the person she lent her powers to who had to pay the price instead of her who lent out her powers. She apologizes to Ni for assuming that she would be the one to compensate Yuuki for using his ability. Shushu suddenly gets an idea, and she gets the group's attention. She tells Kayoyuka it's her turn to try out another one of Yuuki's forms. Kayoyuka tells her that she's likely to engage in battle if she does, and if it's a full-blown fight, she'll have to give Yuuki an extreme reward. The thought of the extreme reward she'll have to give Yuuki makes her lose her focus. Kayoyuka asks her if she's sure she can handle the reward, which snaps her back into reality. She tells Kayoyuka she'll be fine because she's motivated to exterminate all Shuki and a silly reward won't stop her. Kayoyuka likes her answer and tells her to hop on. Shushu hops on enthusiastically and she happily takes the reins. She suddenly pulls the chains and several chains erupt from the ground and wrap around Yuuki. Yuuki breaks off the chains and his form changes. Yuuki tells them that he feels insanely strong, but he's a lot more sluggish. Himuri notices he looks bulkier as well, but Kayuka thinks that lending her power to Shushu isn't worth it if Yuuki only becomes a lot stronger. Shushu tells her not to jump to such hurried conclusions. She tells Kayoyuka that there's a chance Yuuki will also get bigger if she uses her powers to get bigger. Yuuki wonders if that's true and Shushu tells him to have some faith. She uses her powers, but she ends up crushing Yuuki under her weight. She tends to his wounds after, bummed out that she didn't get to give him a proper reward. Kayuka tells her they won't be using her version of Yuuki's slave abilities in battle anytime soon. Yuuki asks Kayoyuka if she'll be alright with using her abilities so much, and she tells him she'll have to get used to it. She tells him they'll prioritize using his abilities with Ni as his rider. Suddenly, the alarm goes off and Kayuka tells her it's time for her to go to school. Ni decides to quickly change her clothes and head to school. Yuuki watches her leave, wondering why she decided to join the Demon Defense Force in the first place. Ni is about to leave and Kayoyuka tells her to be careful. Yuuki offers to walk her to school because he wants to talk to her and Kayoyuka permits him. She gives him an exit pass and tells him to get to know Ni better since she's his superior. Ni apologizes for taking his time, but he tells her not to worry about it. They walk through a portal and they're teleported out of the base. As they're walking, Ni shows Yuuki around. She figures out that he wants to know why she joined the Demon Defense Academy. Yuuki thinks it must be tough for her to handle both going to school and working for the Demon Defense Force. She tells him it's not so bad because she doesn't go to school every day and the Demon Defense Force is a worthwhile cause to join because she hopes to find her parents. Her parents suddenly went missing in the past and all evidence pointed to a motto mishap. Yuuki realizes that she also lost her family. 
She tells him that there have been rumors of people getting calls from or catching glimpses of their relatives that vanished in motto mishaps. Yuuki tells her he has heard such stories before. Mi tells him that when she ate the peach to get her clairvoyant abilities, her feelings manifested as her ability. Yuuki can see the reason she gave her ability such a name. He tells her he's sure her parents are still out there because he's sure his sister is also still out there. Mi feels reassured. Tenka pays a visit to Kayoyuka and she brings her news from the Supreme Commander. The Supreme Commander ordered them not to engage the humanoid Shuki in combat until told otherwise. She tells Kayoyuka the commander's objective is to engage with the humanoids to find out how intelligent they are. Kayoyuka tells her that humanoids usually attack first and ask questions later. Tenka tells her the commander hopes to find out Mato's secrets so she can solve the Shuki problem and prevent Mato mishaps. Kayuka tells her it's all wishful thinking. Tenka tells her the commander said she'll set up a meeting where they can voice their opinions. Kayoyuka tells her that Shuki won't answer the commander's summons and Tenka thinks it'll inevitably lead to a battle. Tenka tells Kayoyuka that she has the full cooperation of the 6th Squadron and Kayoyuka is glad to hear that. After the meeting, Tenka greets Ni and Yuuki. Yuuki is surprised to see her, but Ni welcomes her. Suddenly an alarm goes off and Himari confirms the appearance of several gateways while on patrol. Ni confirms their location and Tenka offers to drop them off. Shushu and Himari are surrounded by Shuki, but Tenka arrives with Yuuki and Kaiyuka. Tenka wants to help, but Kaiyuka tells her to stand back because the area isn't under her jurisdiction. Kaiyuka tells Yuuki they need to get to action and he activates his slave abilities. He notices that Kaiyuka seems to be in a bad mood. She tells him she takes back her words about not interfering with his private life. She tells him he can't fawn over another station commander and Yuuki is surprised. She tells him he's a slave only to her and he agrees with her. They go into battle and she realizes that he needs harsher disciplinary methods. She pulls his chains out which strains him and she takes out a Shuki. She tells him to take care of the rest and he defeats them easily. Himari takes down a few with her special weapon, but a new type of Shuki suddenly emerges from the ground beneath her. She jumps to safety, surprised by the new Shuki. Tenka is also surprised by the Shuki's appearance. Yuuki rushes to face the new Shuki. He jumps into the air and attacks it, but he doesn't defeat it. He realizes that the monster is tough, and it regenerates quickly. Kayuka decides to test its regenerative abilities, and they unleash a huge attack on it, which takes it out. A humanoid watches them from afar. She sees that her augmented Shuki isn't practical in a battle. Her fellow humanoid wonders what she's doing, and she tells her she's toying with the humans. She wonders what she can try next. After the battle, Yuuki tells Kayoyuka that her warnings hyped him up when he transformed. Tenker returns to her base. She thinks about Yuuki, and she's convinced her life won't be as dull as it used to be. Kayoyuka and Yuuki keep battling the Shuki as they emerge. They clear out a group of them, but more emerge to take them on. Kayuka signals Yuuki to initiate a special move, and she launches herself into the air. Yuuki swings her around with the chains, and she takes out the surrounding Shuki. She thinks the battle is over, and all the Shuki have been brought down, but another one suddenly emerges. Yuuki spots it quickly, and he punches it down to pieces. Kayuka compliments him for spotting the Shuki and taking it out quickly. She pats him on his head, and Yuuki is pleased with her compliment. He knows he'll get stronger if she'll keep complimenting him like this. He's sure he'll become strong enough to protect Kayoyuka from danger eventually. After the battle, Kayoyuka jumps into his arms like a newly wedded bride in the arms of the groom. She's surprised by the unorthodox reward because she didn't sustain any injuries. Yuuki is also surprised by the reward he's getting. Kayoyuka tells him such antiques would work on Ni, but they'll never work on her, but Yuuki tries to convince her that it's appropriate. After the battle, they return to the squad base and Kayoyuka gives them details of the battle. They're pleased to see that Yuuki is making progress and Kayoyuka is glad. He follows her orders by seeking out the most efficient method to attack. They compliment him and Yuuki is so embarrassed that he blushes. Tenka tells him he looks adorable when he blushes. Shushu gets jealous and she reminds Tenka that she shouldn't be in their dorm. Tenka tells her not to bother about that and she keeps complimenting Yuuki. 
Shushu gets even more jealous and she tries to stop Tenka. Kayoyuka stares at her angrily and Yuuki tries to explain how his sister taught him a lot when they were little. Himari remembers when he told her about his sister and Kayoyuka thinks he must really admire her. Yuuki tells them he admires her and Tenka wonders what she was like. Yuuki takes a trip down memory lane to when he was much younger. He was walking down the street one evening when he was stopped by two bullies. The younger bully told him he didn't like being ignored, and he asked Yuuki if he thinks he's dumb. Yuuki told him he only ignored him because he said mean things to him. The older bully told Yuuki to play nice with his younger brother, and he put his hands on Yuuki to make him uncomfortable. Yuuki's sister came to his rescue and told the older bully to get his hands off Yuuki. The bully recognized her as his sister, and he immediately rushed at her. He threw a punch at her, but she blocked it easily and used his momentum to throw him flat on his back. While she stood triumphantly over the older bully, the younger bully tried to make a move on Yuuki, but Yuuki overpowered him. His sister thought he was in danger, but he told her he learned some things from her while they were practicing wrestling moves. She was so proud to see that he wasn't a wimp. The bullies ran away with embarrassment, and his sister told him their triumph was worth celebrating. She told him she would treat him to a snack, and they went for some ramen. He tells them that was just how his sister was, and Tenka thinks she was a good sister to him. Kayoyuka realizes that she was teaching him how to fight, and he didn't even realize it. Himari could relate with being the younger sibling, and having a more powerful older sibling. Kayoyuka tells Yuuki to take the rest of the evening off, and he decides to take a bath before getting some sleep. She tells Tenka to return to her base, and Tenka opens a portal to her base. She tells Yuuki goodbye, and she leaves the squad base. Everyone turns to Yuuki after she leaves, and he takes that as a cue to leave the room. Ni was feeling jealous with all the talk of older siblings and Kayuka tells her she didn't have siblings either. Shushu confesses that she was spoiled by everyone in her family because she was the youngest. Himari now understands why she behaves the way she does. Ni suddenly detects that someone is in danger, and she informs Kayoyuka of the location. Kayoyuka rallies Himari and Shushu, and they head out to the location with their vehicle. A little girl is running from a group of Shuki, but they arrive in time to help her. Himari starts firing the gun mounted on the vehicle, and she takes out the Shuki. She runs up to the girl and offers to help her up, but the girl suddenly lands a hard punch on her gut, which sends her flying. The girl turns out to be a humanoid named Coco and she's glad to have caught some Demon Defense Corps members. Shushu realizes she's a humanoid and Coco gets ready to go into battle with them. Shushu helps Himari up and Himari reveals she blocked the humanoid's attack with her shield in time. The humanoid summons several Shuki. Himari calls Coco by her name and Coco is surprised by this. She wonders how Shushu knows her name and Shushu reminds her that she literally said her name after punching her. She tells Coco their supreme leader is willing to negotiate and she asks her if she'll comply. Coco tells her to dream on and she promises to crush them all. Meanwhile Yuuki is taking a hot bath and he notices the cuts and bruises he got from fighting a lot of Shuki. He looks at his form in the mirror and he's happy with his gains. Kayoyuka suddenly opens the door on him and she informs him that they are under attack. She tells him he needs to transform and he's surprised she wants him to transform without any clothes on. She tells him there's no time because Himari and Shushu are in danger. Himari tries firing her machine gun at the animal Shuki summoned by Coco, but the bullets are useless against it. Coco tells her the animal has tough armor and Himari decides to summon a bigger gun. She tells Coco she can adapt as well and she fires a huge energy beam from the gun. Coco dodges it and launches an attack against her, but she cancels her ability in time and dodges out of the way. Coco is enjoying the battle and she continues figuring Himari. Shushu stomps out the other Shuki and she decides to help out Himari, but a little Shuki comes flying out of nowhere. Shushu squashes it with her hands, but Shuki breaks her grip and a humanoid holding a weapon comes out of the insect. The humanoid attacks Shushu with her spear and Shushu is fatally wounded. Yuuki is rushing to the scene as fast as possible, but a humanoid blocks his path. Kayoyuka and Yuuki recognize her as Ayaba, the humanoid they fought previously. Ayaba eats something to make her hair grow out, and she's about to use them to attack Yuuki. Kayoyuka commands him to dodge it, but Ayaba tells him to stop moving, and he obeys Ayaba. Kayoyuka gets off his back, and the hair traps Yuuki. Ayaba then summons Shuki, but Kayoyuka takes them out. She looks around, and she realizes that Ayaba and Yuuki have vanished. Shushu and Himari rendezvous with her, and she tells them Yuuki was captured. Kayoyuka figures out that Yuuki was the target for the humanoids and Himari, now understands why the humanoids suddenly retreated. Kayoyuka is worried about Yuuki, 
but she tells them they need to head back to base and treat their wounds. She wants them to take a breather and regroup. Yuuki remembers the day his sister went missing while he's asleep. He wakes up calling out to a name, but he feels a pleasant sensation on his face. He sees Coco sitting on him and licking his face. He tries to push her off, but another humanoid holds him down. Coco explains that she's healing up his wounds and Yuuki remembers he was captured. He's uncomfortable, but he remembers when Ayaba called his name during the battle, and he figures out that she's his sister. He tries to speak out, but Coco tells him to stop moving so she can be thorough with her cleaning. Yuuki doesn't like being violated like that. Ayaba suddenly enters the room wondering if Yuuki is awake, but she sees Coco in a suspicious position with him. She immediately takes Coco off him, pissed that she stripped him naked, but the other humanoid explains that it's a misunderstanding. She tells Ayaba Yuuki was naked when his transformation reversed and Coco was just trying to heal his wounds. Coco tells him she tried to heal all his wounds because he is her brother and Yuuki realizes that all his wounds are gone. Koko explains that her saliva has medicinal properties and Ayaba thanks her for healing Yuuki's injuries. Yuuki is now sure that Ayaba is his sister and she comes up to hug him because she hadn't seen him for a while. He's so happy to see that she has been alive all this time that he sheds tears of joy. The humanoids are also happy, the siblings are now reunited. Yuuki wonders why Ayaba doesn't look normal, and she reminds him that he's the one not wearing clothes. She hands him some clothes and tells him they need to go for a walk so she can explain everything to him. Yuuki gets dressed and they head out. Yuuki is amazed by the view and Ayaba tells him the place is called the Hidden Village. She tells him there are no peach trees in the location so the demon defense force can't come poking around there. Yuuki sees some children waving at them, and he's surprised there are more people who look like Ayaba in the village. Ayaba tells him that many people who were formerly humans now call the village home. Koko and Neon introduce themselves to Yuuki. Yuuki wonders if Shuki were also once humans, but Ayaba tells him they are just monsters. They explain that humanoids are special cases because they are half humans and half monsters. Ayaba tells him they ended up like that by accident, but their goals remain humane. She tells Yuuki he can live with her in the village, and he doesn't have to worry about being treated like a slave. Yuuki tries to convince her that she doesn't need to hide since they're still humans. He tells her the demon defense force will be able to protect them. Their demeanor immediately changes and Ayaba tells him they can't go to the demon defense force for help because they are enemies. Ayaba is pissed that they enslaved Yuuki, and she tells him they can't be allies because of the hierarchy in the demon defense force. Neon tells him a battle between the two sides is inevitable. Yuuki is surprised by how they went from being so friendly to becoming completely hostile. Back at the 7th squad base, Himari tends to Shushu's injuries. She's put on bandages on her arm, and she tells her she would be fine since the cut wasn't very deep. Shushu is more worried about Yuuki. Ni walks in and Shushu wonders if she was able to locate Yuuki. Ni tells her she hasn't located him, but she asked other squads to help her with the search, and she decided to widen the search area as well. Shushu wonders what Kayoyuka is doing, because she had been in her room since they got back from the battle. Himuri reminds Shushu that Kayoyuka is under command from the Supreme Commander not to attack humanoids. Shushu is worried that Yuuki will be harmed while they are sitting around, but Himuri assures her that the humanoids have something specific in mind since he was only kidnapped. She tells her not to worry because Yuuki is safe, and she's sure the commander will come up with a good plan to rescue him. Kayoyuka remembers Yuuki obeying Ayaba's command, and she vows to scold him when he comes back. She suddenly gets a signal from somewhere within Mono. Yuuki asks Ayaba how she knew he was in Mato, and she tells him she sensed his presence. Yuuki is surprised she can do that, but she reminds it's her job to always know where he is. She confesses that Yuuki is all grown up now, and he looks very handsome. The others agree with her and Ayaba is so happy. Yuuki's stomach suddenly growls and Ayaba decides to get him something to eat. Yuuki apologizes to the others for his sister's unorthodox ways, but they tell him everyone loves her even with her flaws. Koko begins eating a mushroom and Yuuki loves the aroma it gives off. Koko tells him the motto mushroom is grown in the village and Yuuki begins to wonder what ingredients he can pair it with, but he suddenly enters a state of ecstasy. He sees Neon as a pair of meatballs that Ayaba served him, and he decides to take a bite. Ayaba comes back with some field rations she swiped from some demon defense force members, but she sees Yuuki having a feast of his own. Kayoyuka comes out of her room and tells the group to prepare to head out. They figure out that she has found Yuuki. Kayoyuka tells them her body began moving automatically, which means Yuuki's transformation was broken. 
she realizes she can be a walking radar for Yuuki since she needs to give him his reward. Yuuki apologizes to Ayaba for his actions, but Ayaba is just glad to have him sitting next to her again. Yuuki recognizes the motto peach in Ayaba's hand, and he remembers she hadn't eaten any before they were separated. He thought her abilities were derived from the peach, and she tells him there's a connection between her ability and the peach. She tells him the peach is the reason for their looks and Yuuki is interested in her story. Back at the 7th squad base, Kayoyuka tells Ni to stay back and keep in contact with HQ. The 6th squad members come through a portal and both squads move out as a united front. Watch this next video. See you on the next one.